Good morning. Connection looks good here. It's good here as well. Okay, good to start. I'm gonna say so. Welcome to today's session, which is uh, yin and a yang. Well, yang and yin are always complementary to each other. So, um, where yang is more as a dynamic form of practice, which we all know, yin is more subliming. It's more static and slow. So, this two qualities of yang and yin is within everybody. All of us have got this. Uh, and uh, it's all about trying to balance it out. If we are having too much of energy, we should be going into yin practices more. And if we are more someone who is a pacified person, a yang practices helps to balance it out. Now, often we would be uh, taking up yin individually, then yang individually. But today, for the time's sake, we are combining both of these two practices together. Uh, yang practices um, usually focuses more on muscle groups, burning out the strength and stamina, using those superficial uh, heating uh, elements or components of the body, whereas yin goes more into the deeper connective tissues, especially the ligaments. And in order to actually target our ligaments, usually we need to have a holding time of over two to three minutes. And some yin postures can also be helpful like around 10 minutes or longer. So. But again, for the sake of this video, and because we have limited time of 60 minutes, we'll be holding at a range of two or three minutes for most of our practice. So let's work hard. Again, this is your own practice online. There is nobody to push. So try your best to choose your own option. Uh, let that be initiative for you to practice and take whatever you can take in from this hour today. Um, make it simplified, give yourself some challenges, and at the end of the practice, all what matters is how good we feel, how complete we feel. And uh, yeah, on that note, let's begin. So sitting into a hero pose, let's bring the palms in front of the heart, close your eyes for a moment. So the intention of today's practice it can be just an internal healing. It can be trying to let go of anything which we are holding. Maybe grievances, maybe fear, or anything which you feel does not belong to you and you want to purify yourself. Softening the face. Softening the mind with a state of inner gratitude. I just want to share this love, this quality of oneness, universal connection in whichever part of the world we are in. We need this healing energy together. Take a deep breath in here. And exhale. One more deep breath in. And side out. My humble bow to all of the students and teachers over here. Namaste. Let's start coming into all fours position. So coming up on our hands and shin. We untuck the toes first. We check those vertical lines. We'll start up with a couple of cat and cow. The yang practice would be mostly dynamic. We will be having limited holes. But at the same time, again, check for the intensity or depth which you want to work on with. Let's go on for sinking the chest down, inhale to reach the head up. Exhale to round the back and scoop the tailbone, open up the shoulder blades, chin into the chest. Inhale, lowering down, open up. Exhale, fold in. 
Inhale. Exhale, fold again. One more. Inhale, each up. Widen those collarbones. And exhale, fold in. Inhale, come back to neutral spine. Exhale, stay. Now inhale, extend your right hand forward, your left leg at the back, stretch. Exhale, reach in, bringing your elbow and the nose in towards the left knee. Crunch, inhale, stretch out. Exhale, reach in. Inhale, extend. Exhale, fold. Inhale, extend. Exhale, fold. Extend on the inhale. Exhale, relax it down. Let's switch the side. On the next inhale, extend out your left arm and the right leg. Exhale, round and reach in. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, reach in. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale, stretch higher. Exhale. Inhale, extend. And exhale, set it back down. Tuck the toes under. Let's press up in a downward facing dog from here. Walk the dog, paddle out the legs, releasing those calves, the Achilles. And maybe you want to wiggle those hips, reaching them side to side. So once again, check what feels good right now at this moment. Maybe elevating each leg, trying to have a little tilt of the pelvis anteriorly creating length in the spine and then settle down as the heel sinks the arms reaches into the length of the side line of the body and staying there for a steady dog for two breaths good inhale come forward into plank exhale bring knees chest chin down into the mat Inhale, shift and roll up in a cobra. Exhale, tuck toes, push back in downward facing dog. Once again, inhale into plank. Exhale, sit knees, chest, chin down. Inhale, roll up in a bigger cobra this time. Exhale, tuck toes, down dog. One more of that. Inhale, plank. Exhale, Ashtanga Namaskar. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Adho Mukhasvanasana. Inhale, step your right foot in between the palm. Exhale, step in the left foot and separate the feet at the hips width from each other. Keeping a slight bend on the knees, inhale, lift halfway, lengthen. Exhale and fold forward. Grab the opposite elbows. Relax down for a couple of breaths. Allow the head to feel heavy, the neck to feel long, the side body to feel long as the elbow starts sinking downward. Take one more breath. And then relax the palms down. Lift halfway, inhale in. Exhale, step back, down dog. Come forward into plank, inhale. Lower down in Chaturanga and Dasana. Exhale. Maybe an up dog or maybe still a cobra. Inhale. Down dog. Push back. Exhale. Repeat. Plank. Inhale. Exhale. Plunge and go down. Chaturanga. Inhale to upward facing. Exhale to downward facing. One more time. Inhale. Plank. Exhale. Chaturanga. Holding it for three, two, one. Upward facing dog. Inhale. Downward facing dog. Exhale. And step your left foot forwards. Inhale. Step in the right as well. Feet are together this time on the exhale. Lift halfway in. Exhale and fold. Grab in your ankle and sink in deeper this time. Release it. Come up in Utkatasana. Inhale. Let's stay there for a couple of breaths. Try transferring the weight back towards the heels, letting the toes feel light. Arms are energetically activated to stretch the sidelines of the body. And keeping this form of your knees behind the line of the toes, try and sink a bit more deeper. 
get those ribs in, let the tailbone scoop down to activate those outer glutes. Inhale in here. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, step or jump back. Chaturanga. Inhale and drop dog. Exhale, push back down with facing dog. Take two breaths. Meet in the feet together. Raise the right leg up. Bend the right knee. Open it out to the left side from the top and hold it for two. Straighten the right leg, come forward into plank. Bring the right knee to your left elbow. Hold it for two. Push back in a three leg dog, inhale. Bend and open it one more time. And try feeling the ground, that's the left heel getting a bit heavier now. Straighten the right leg, come forward, plank again. Bring the right knee to your left elbow. This time, extend out the right leg to the left side. Ground the back heel down and raise the left hand up on the next inhale. Lend it up, pressing into the right palm. And then lower it down, push back, three leg dog, inhale in. Exhale, come forward to plank and lower down in Chaturanga. Inhale up dog, relax the right foot. Exhale, push back down dog. Hold it, a couple of deep breaths. Let's move on with the other side. Meeting those feet together. Raise the left leg up, bend and open it out to the right side. Come forward to plank, straightening the left leg. Bring the left knee to the right elbow. Hold. Push back, three leg dog, inhale. Bend and open out to the side again. Let the stretch go deeper, both in the dimension of your grounded heel, as well as upper quads. Straighten the leg, come forward. Bring the left knee to the right elbow, this time extend it out to the right side of the mat. Beam it from the ball of the right foot, ground the right heel down, and reach the right arm up. So your left palm pressing down into the floor, through the left shoulder, reaching the right fingertips high. Legs are strong. And then bring it back down. Push back, three leg dog, inhale. Exhale, plank, going down in chaturanga. Inhale to upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take four breaths. Gaze forward, inhale, step or jump in between the palms, your choice. Exhale, fall forward. Inhale, Utkatasana, bend and raise up. Join the palms in front of the heart. Keeping the body down at a 45 degree, step your left foot back. So it is an inclined lunge position. Now reach the arms out. So the biceps and the ears connects in one plane. Using the shoulders, raise the hand higher as the chest sinks down towards the right knee. A strong back leg, one more time. Arms goes higher, the chest sinks down. And then on the next exhale, shift front, come up in a warrior three. And maybe square hip, strong bottom leg. Reaching those arms up, legs high. Bend the right leg, step back to that incline lunge, open in a warrior two from there. So trying to keep the pelvis parallel to the longer side of the mat, you're going to have your right knee moving slightly towards the direction of the little toe with an external rotation of your back thigh. So if you want to adjust the width in between the legs, stretch out, inhale. Sink a bit deeper, exhale. Inhale, lend in. Now rotate your right arm up, come into a reverse warrior. So working with the side obliques. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, extend at side angle. 
Patra Gunasana. Reach your left arm along with the ear. Now choose any form you might want to go into a bind here or even getting your right elbow on top of the right thigh to make it simple. One last breath. Pushing the hip forwards, turning that left thigh up and back. Good, look down now. Left hand comes on your hip. The right palm sits down in front of your right foot. Push down into the right palm, step the right foot back. Come on the outer edge of the right foot, stack your left foot on top of the right and come into a side plank. High hips, strong legs, wide right collarbone, reaching up with the hips using those side body. One more breath. And look down, back to plank. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. All right, two breaths. All right, gaze forward. Step or jump in between the palms. Lend and inhale. Fall down, exhale. Utkatasana, inhale. You down the side now. Palms in front of the heart. Lean the torso down at a 45 degree. Shifting front, extend back your right foot. And checking the vertical line between the left knee and the heel. The left thigh is parallel to the ground. Or maybe slightly unbending in case that's challenging. Bring those arms up. The biceps and the ears aligned. Sinking the chest down and towards the left thigh. Raise those arms higher as they're active. Back leg strong. One more time. Reach those arms up. Sink the chest down. Long spine, strong back leg. And then shift forward. Warrior three. Pull it up. Steady back leg. Lifting it high. Legs are strong. One more breath. And then take a bend. Step back. Open into warrior two. One more time, a check. The pelvis is aligned with the front of the mat. The left knee is going out towards the outer edge. Little toes. Turning the right foot at a 90 degree in respect to the front leg. Lend into the side. Inhale. Bend a bit deeper. Exhale. Inhale in here. And then a reverse. Back to center. Inhale. Pasrakonasana. Left elbow on the thigh. Or reaching down, bringing the upper arm up. So constantly think about getting your bottom ribs rotating up. The back leg is strong as the arms extends. Maybe a bind was an option. The right pelvis begins to unfold, the thighs going upwards and back. Final breath. Look down. Now the right palm comes down the hip. The left palm pushes down into the mat. Step the left foot back. Coming on the outer edge, step the right foot on top of the inner arch of the left foot. Raise up. Watch your stasana. Your options, maybe modifying it to simple or the challenging ones. High hips, wide collarbones, last breath. Look down, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale up dog. Exhale down the dog. Okay, let's take a break off for four breaths this time. Good. Gaze forward. Step or jump forward. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway up. Let's prepare for a crow, so widen the legs around the hip width distance. Set your arms at the shoulder width from each other. Shift forwards. You might want to go for one foot off if you're still working on your basic crow. Those of your advanced can also go for either a crane or one leg crow. So choose. 10 seconds. 
setting it up, and hi. Five. I really want to jump, but I don't think I have space behind me. But let's give it a try. Three, two, one, jump. Chaturanga with wide legs, so I save him, and up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale. Take two breaths. Gaze forward, step or jump forward once again. Fold forward, exhale. Set two, crow. One leg crow is your option. If you're doing your basic crow prep with one foot down on the floor, tiptoeing, and the other leg coming up, change the side this time. So knees up, set it high, shift, and bring up from the opposite side of the foot. 10. Heels high up to the butt, shoulders wide, five. And Chaturanga. Inhale up dog. Exhale down dog. And a few deep breaths. Step the right foot forwards. Turn your right foot towards the left side of the room. Let's come into a prasarita. From there, lift halfway, gather length. Now exhale, fold. And have your hands holding the big toes, the ankle, or maybe even wrapping them back to stretch out the shoulder, see what works. Now, setting ourselves up into any inversion of your choice. Tripod headstand is the one which I would select. You can go on for a Pinchamay Rasana handstand, it's your choice. If that's not available for your practice, simply repeat a crow. Or maybe even stay in a Prasarita where we are right now. So let's set up the triangle, equilateral form. Check those lower arms vertically aligned with the floor. Come on the tippy toes, push down, and up we go. Legs are strong and engaged. Navel is drawn in. Core is engaged. Elbows hugging in. Widen the legs and let's come back down. Prasarita once again. Push back up. Lift halfway. Inhale. Exhale. Turn back to your front foot once again. Set your back knee down to the floor. Straighten the front leg. Inhale. Lengthen. Exhale. Half Hanumanasana. And Hanumanasana is a choice, so go ahead for a full version if you would like to work on that. Inhale, lift halfway up. Bend the front leg. Let's come into a lizard lunge. So have your right arm coming to the inside of your right foot. The back knee, choose to keep it down or lift it back and up. Choice would be yours depending on what the feeling is, how much you want to challenge yourself. Maybe some hip flexor back there. And then relax, walk back up. Now bring your right hand on the right hip, create a twist. Bend the back leg, grab hold of the foot and draw the heel in. So you can pulse a couple of times if you want to. You can even use like a PNF, pushing the back foot into the arm, pulling the foot inwards, creating resistance. And then softening the resistance to let the heel come a little bit more in. Release. Center the back leg once again. Center the front foot as well. Now slide through and see how far into your Hanuman Asana you might want to go. Spine is long. Try pulling the front hip backwards. 
the back hip forward to try squaring those hips. And push back up into a three leg dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Relax. Exhale, down dog. Two breaths. Sarita on the other side, left foot lunging front. Turn the left foot towards the right side. Lift halfway, inhale. Exhale, fold. Once again, maybe grabbing toes, ankle, or your choice. Let's take a nice stretch over there. Even if the head touches down or doesn't, hardly matters. It should feel good. You can always try and touch those crown down by widening the legs, but that's not the intention. It's to feel right. Okay, inversion of your choice. So set it up. Anything which you want to go for. Maybe modifying the hands positioning on your tripod. So check it out. Squeezing the legs. Ribs in, navel in. Balancing that, soft hands, weight is on the head, and then widen back, nice and slow, reaching down, push back up, turning back to the front foot, set the back knee down, half hand along, straighten the front leg, lend and inhale, exhale and fold. Hanumanasana was an option here, though it comes back in later again. Lift halfway, bend the front leg for a lizard lunge. Have the left arm coming inside, stay down on the forearms. Maybe the back leg lifting up to stretch the hip flexor more. Or maybe you're just concentrating on the opening of the front hip. breath. Set the back knee down, walk your palms up. So now, bringing the left hand on the hip, giving the body a twist, fold the back leg, bring the heel into the hip, or simply if that's a sufficient stretch, be there. Maybe pulsating a couple of times, or just using the resistance of your foot to push into the hand as the hand pulls inward. Now that uh, tension starts softening the quads and the hip flexor. Proprioceptive neuromuscular felicitation, PNF. You can Google that in case it's new for you. And then one last time, try and pull the back heel into the hip. And then release it. Center the front leg. Check the back leg, straighten the front leg and slide through. Hanuman Asana is not a final challenge or target here. Just come to the point you feel happy about it. Maybe again a couple of pulsating moves or just uh, staying static, feeling right about it. The back hip drawn in, the front goes back, it's fine as well. Push down, returning back in a three leg dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Up dog, in. Down dog, push back. All right. Two breaths. And set your knees down. Take a wide legged child's pose. Stretch those arms forward and just relax.
and stay in the child's pose, just listen. The transition between a yang and a yin energy is quite subtle. Uh, we have to tune into another channel from the outburst of energy into something which is more static, more grounded. So take a moment to really take a few deeper respiration. And each time as you're breathing out, feel landing down into the earth more. Feel heavy. Feel the earth supporting the weight of your body and nourishing the body to rejuvenate. Feel the connection with your inner self, which is in harmony, which is in peace, irrespective of all what's happening outside. That is the way we learn to actually master the state of our mind on the yoga mat. Feel joyful for this breath for this healthy body, for this life. Let's take a moment to offer your gratitude to the supreme source of every creation, whichever creation you believe in. Maybe Shiva, Jesus, Allah, your own self-belief, the supreme creation is supreme. Deep breath in, fill the gratitude and love. And exhale it out. Let's come back up from the child's pose and gently open up your eyes. Let's continue. So now we are going in for the yin practice. Um, timing would vary from two to three minutes depending on the intensity of the poses. As we are switching, my suggestion for the yin practices is we are not trying to get flexible here. We are just trying to let those muscle group softly extend, which we have been contracting for quite some time, and also let that heat which you have built up to passively open and release the ligaments. So usually we want to put in an effort of around 60% to 70 maybe for the last few seconds if you want to go for a deeper ring and it feels good you can go deeper okay so the first one we start on with uh, some knees release ankle release so if you have that a block with you take one step at the front of the mat roll out the calves set the block back and get seated now we are going into a recline form. The difference when you are having the block to stay elevated is that your hips are higher away from the ground, which was previously without a block, more grounded. And that improvises a lot more of range of uh, stretch around the quads, the hip flexor, maybe slightly less on your knee joint if the block isn't there. But again, releasing this entire facial belt is what we are looking for over here. So again, taking the hands back, and setting our elbows down. We'll hold this for two minutes. And uh, this might be a final form for a lot of us. And if that gives a lot of tension around the quads, probably you might as well want to modify and skip the block completely and do it grounded. As it starts to feel better, you might want to walk back. If you have got a pillow, you can keep it just behind your ribs to lie down on the pillow. And if it's available for your range of motion, maybe fully lying down. 
the knee has a tendency to lift up here and just let it be for now. Just relax into it. Take any arms position you desire to. And in practices we often just try letting the body to lead whatever it wants to lead rather than trying to fix up too many stuffs there. So because it's a passive practice, we just want to surrender into the pose. When you actively try and press the knees down towards the floor, it doesn't stay zen anymore. So allowing that uh, breath to slowly keep sinking down as we are almost uh, three-fourth of the time done now. Checking the breath. I need to sink the whole body down, feeling grounded. the bell so that's two minutes without any rush see how you want to exit out you can stretch the legs out from there if it feels better or you can have your hands grabbing into the ankle push down and sit up this way of coming up does take some effort put the block aside stretch those legs out take a moment to tap the knees Nice. And from there, let's work on the spine as we just uh, helped our sacrum to get some release. Place the second level of the block right at the base of the scapula so you can take your thumb back to locate the scapula. This is where your block should be. If it's slightly higher or lower, it doesn't make a huge difference, but again, check which part feels comfortable for the body. So set it up. That feels good. And then allow the scapula to roll a little bit to the side so that creates space for the openness of the thoracic. And then gradually letting the weight of the head sink down. We'll hold this for two minutes as well. The timer starts. If you're someone who needs a level of the block to be modified, higher or lower, go ahead and do it. Raising those arms overhead increases the load on the upper back. That can be a choice. You can test it out how it feels. As long as it's comfortable, it's a good choice. Or keep the hands in your previous position. And try and surrender. Consciously check the body. It's more than half of way done. Once again, check the spine. Try feeling the hips getting heavier, feeling the legs grounded, the weight of the hands assisting the curve. And the breath leads away for the last few seconds here. Without a rush, bring your hands to support the head. So let the hands actually hold the sides of your head and use the arms 
to lift the chin into the chest. So you're carrying the weight of the head. It's not the neck which carries it. It feels a lot more nice and easier on the neck. Now once your chin goes into the chest, I know you might be looking at the screen, but as long as you're just listening, it's good enough. Bring your hands next to the hips and use the arms, push back up. Okay, nice. Right, this time facing forward. Fold your legs like you want to uh, keep them at the width of the mat. Get your wrist against your side body, close to the pelvic bone. Insert the elbow in between your thighs, one at a time. Notice that if you're putting the palms into the side, the mobility, the flexion of the wrist will increase the range of motion here. But what you want to do is to have your wrist going on the side body instead of the top of the palm. So push those arms slightly more back. And then as we hold it for two minutes, we start to bring the knees in towards each other. The timing starts. Remember the starting of the practice, around 70% of your full range of motion. This is not really very passive on the legs because the legs are actually assisting the range of motion of our arms. And in a lots of poses like that, when you're having a particular muscle group working, you have to create extra resistance or force. And that external force can help to release the deeper joints. As long as it is gravity assisted, the practice would be completely uh, friendly of any muscle engagement, you can actually set off everything free. More than half of it is done, so you might want to bring these knees a bit close to each other and hence those elbows as well. The stretch would be more on the posterior part of the shoulder. to do the work as elbows comes a little bit more close for the final few seconds. I'll let the knees go out first. Nice and slow, take those arms out. Rest the hands at the back. Let the shoulder roll backwards. So you're working to push and expand the chest. It's exactly a reverse motion as the scapula are coming close to each other. Take a deep breath. All right, now if you have got a block, bring it in again. This time, you want to put the block in between the feet so the point of your knees and now going further away from each other this can make the practice challenging so if a butterfly itself is challenging for you you want to have the block probably underneath your hips or no blocks at all so this just adds on to the adductor stretch so check it out what works for you so checking those knees the farthest possible point to be here grabbing in the block Take a breath in. Letting the knees to sink, start bending forwards as we hold it for three minutes in this one. Growing stretches are more into deeper muscle groups to activate all those deeper muscle groups 
usually a longer hold is more applicable and beneficial. So again, we don't have to try and press the ball of our big toes into the block, just let it be the way it wants to go. As we stay in the practice, feel the knees sinking. And in yin practice, sometimes it also feels good to move around and try and really find that sweet point of which makes us feel like, yes, this is exactly what I was looking for from this pose and uh, so move around see if it feels good to change the form or maybe even change the block check your right hip if you consciously relax it Relax it all the way till the right knee. And check your left, the left groin. Release it more. Relax the hip. Let the knee sink. Got last almost close to 30 seconds. See if you wish to go any deeper now. Gentle and slow, walk back up. Take the block aside. Set your feet down, mats with distance. Put the palms back. Bring both the knees to the right side. Come back, switch the knee to the left. One more time. Up and right. And left. Come back to center. Facing to its uh, front again, the longer side of the mat. Separate the feet. It's called a snail in yin terms. So you want to keep a block right at the horizontal plane, just uh, in the same plane as your shins are extending, crossing the point of the knees. So you want to go and do a passive forward fold here for three minutes. So get tighter on the hamstring, bending knee is fine. Use the elevated platform of the block. Turn it down to see what works for you again. So whenever you're ready, let's go into it. Hold. And I understand that uh, some of us feel probably not much in this form at all. And if you're someone who is really flexible, the other option is put two blocks, one under each of your heels, and then sink the body down. And then maybe you can even go into a tortoise pose with the heels elevated. That means the stretch in the hamstring in the back would feel a lot more greater. So option is open, see what feels good. No intention of trying to go long with the spine, but again, just checking the nice flexion which you receive in the back. The legs will tend to fall out on the side. 
and that might start feeling the stretch a little bit less if you feel like you want to add more stretch pull those feet upwards again creating external resistance force in order to have a greater length on specific muscle groups or joints which we are working and almost halfway down and see if you wish to change the setting of the block to the next lower level or maybe all the way down the intention of having a block over here is to support the weight of the head Soften the shoulders more. You might want to even set your palms flat on the floor if it feels good. Less than a minute left. Again, check if you wish to change. to exit from it, do not rush, walk the palms next to the knees and use the hands to push yourself up. Place the block aside, quickly look at the time. Okay, we can still add on a twist over here. Once again, facing forward, put the hands back. Now drop both your knees towards your right side and place your right foot on top of your left thigh and take a gentle twist on towards the left side of the room hold it for one minute so notice that this is a combination of a few different muscle groups working Definitely the knee and the hip joints are the joints which are working. But at the same time, you're working on those gluteal muscle groups, the abductors, the outer thighs. The obliques and the core getting a gentle stretch with a twist. seconds on it. So first untwist your spine and then relax upper foot. Bring back yourself into the neutral position. Switch side. So coming down towards the left and your left foot mounts on top of the right thigh twisting out towards the right side. Let your upper foot feel heavy all the way till the knee of the same leg. Right hip tends to lift off the floor. That is perfectly fine. Let the left knee start to sink a bit more. 
softening through the outer left hip. Last 10 seconds, breathe. Then twist first, set your upper foot down, come back to center. Sit with a cross-legged position and for a moment close your eyes. Scan the body from the top of the head down to the bottom. Feel the uplifting energy of the yang force within you. Feel the grounding of the yin within you. Feel the harmony of these two forces inside of your body, mind and spirit. Take a deep breath in and sigh it out. One more deep breath in, sigh out. Gently open your eyes. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed the practice today and again we all teachers from Pure Yoga are coming online quite often. We have got uh, like three or four classes running per day so check out the Pure's official Instagram account. You will be having the list of classes which are coming in. Also some of the accounts are also using the Pure official Facebook. So keep up your practice and uh, for my classes check out on my Instagram for the upcoming classes which are uh, I think day after tomorrow and I'll be putting on some more classes on my personal Instagram apart from the peers uh, official as well. So again stay healthy, stay happy and my gratitudes to all of you for nourishing the practice together with me this morning. Thank you, have a lovely day. Namaste.